G'day there Saints fans, Jaden here with another edition, but also the last edition of Oppo View, uh, where we sit down, dissect and discuss our upcoming matchup. We are at the, the last little hurdle of the season, the last game. Um, it's been a long year, um, but I think over the last couple of weeks, we sort of realised that there's there's a lot to look forward to next year, uh, which is which is real positive. Given the year that we've had result-wise, we haven't made finals, but I think over the last sort of six to seven weeks, we can sort of look at that and go, okay, that's the, you know, the platform, that's the the line now that we need to improve on heading into next year. This weekend, we take uh, we go up against Carlton, um, the first game of the year. Thanks to the AFL for the scheduling, um, because we've had to wait twenty five weeks, um, to versus the Blues. But we're up against them. They've got some injury concerns, um, but also they're fighting for a top eight spot. Now they don't have to win, but. From a Carlton supporter base, I'm pretty sure they would just love to get the full points and get some momentum heading into the season. The, the last six weeks especially haven't been all that great for the Blues. Um, they've only won games against the bottom three sides since round 16, which is Richmond, North Melbourne, and West Coast. Now, I think this year there's been a real you know, clear discrepancy and clear difference between the top, you know, the bottom three sides and the rest of the competition. Um, so those three wins, while well, yeah, they're, you know, it's 12 points, it still doesn't sort of show where they're at. Um, they've lost, you know, games convincingly against the Hawks. They lost narrowly against um, the Pies. Uh, they got beaten, not comfortably, but by enough against Port as well. Um, so there's some real concerns for, for Michael Voss and his team. The concern for them is the way they play, the way they move the ball, it's very contested. They don't have line breakers. They don't have anyone who's going to be able to stream down the wing and really, you know, get the uncontested ball movement working. Um, they do like to spread the ground in terms of, you know, the avenues to goal. But in terms of having those one or two players, like for us, we've got Hill, Naz, you know, Ronnie Burns on the outside, Mason Wood, who can, you know, get a bit of space. They don't have anyone like that. They're very contested in and under type uh, midfielders. The one player that probably they do have that can do it is Sam Walsh, who's a bit of a worry. Um... But in terms of the rest of their midfield cogs, they got, you know, going through their list, you know, Chera, Kennedy, um, Hewitt, Cripps, Blake Akers, like they're, they're all big body midfielders. So there's, there's no pace. So I feel like that is something that we can exploit this weekend, especially under the roof of Marvel. We've, we've been playing there really well, apart from that Brisbane game. Um, we did it against Shalong last week. We thought we may have been out and you know, done by half time, but the speed that we had the ball movement going with in the second half was was something that I think Voss and his coaching staff will look at look at and be like, that's concerning. How are we going to be able to stop that? Um, the other thing for them at the moment is clearly the the injury issues. Um, they had a massive you know injury list last week. My expectation is they will get a few back this weekend, um, possibly one or or two of you know the Kerno or Mackay um, type players who. You know, if we can only have one of them to deal with rather than two, then that's going to make our job a little bit easier in the defence. Um, I thought the defence last week in the first half was a little bit shot. Um, you know, Geelong were able to get out the back a little bit, so that's something that we'll, we'll need to tighten up, um, albeit for the last game. But the the, the motto going forward since probably the bye um, and probably that first loss against Brisbane where it was sort of the point, okay, you know, we're probably not going to make finals, is let's continue our form, let's play the competitive football that we know we can play, and let's be the Grinch. Let's be the team that's, you know, going to ruin it for some some other clubs. And I think we've shown that already. We beat Essendon, you know, comfortably. That probably put a dent in their finals aspirations. Um, Geelong last week were looking to sew up a top four spot, possibly a top two. Now they're back with the pack and... They've got to worry about this weekend against uh, West Coast. And then we've got the same situation with the Carlton this week. So, again, they don't have to win. But if we can make their life a little bit of a you know, living hell, then that's going to go a long way and, and give us the confidence heading into next year as well. Some key matchups. I, th I think our midfield's sort of stepped up a little bit over recent weeks. Um, the first half, again, last week, I thought we were a little bit, you know, lackadaisical, a little bit content, a little bit casual. Um but the second half, it was a completely different story. Jack Steele led the way. For, you know, for someone who cops a lot of criticism with his captaincy um, and his you know, lack of leadership at times, um, he has some really key moments defensively in that third quarter, um, which then turned the game. Zach Jones was another one who could hold his head high 
um, with his defensive efforts. And I think as a group in the midfield at the moment, they're really starting to find that flow and really find that consistency going forward. So it's a tough ask. The Blues do have a really strong, as I said, inside midfield group. Um, so I'd love to see Steele and Cripps go head-to-head. They've done it in the past. It's always been a great matchup. And I think Steele's got the, the capability of not only to win the matchup, but also, you know, utilize that for us going forward. Up in the forward line, the unpredictability we have at the moment is really working for us. Um, Jacob Weedering's probably going to go to a Caminiti, um, possibly a memory. Memory's been in some really good marking form. Um, as I said, that game against West Coast, uh, where he kicked fire was really the turning point for him. Um, and again, he's he's someone that's looking for a contract next year, whether that's with us or or another team. Um, you know, possibly, you know, it could be an audition for Carlton in a way, um, or any other the 16 clubs looking for another forward. So um, massive, you know, game for him to be able to step up um, and he'll probably take weeding. Um, ruck battle, it's going to be absolutely key. I'm 100% vocal on Roland Marshall being the All-Australian ruck. I think while everyone's, you know, looking at Sherry and and the work he's done, and, and he's been good, I don't want to take that away from him, but Roland Marshall's averaging over 20 touches. I think it's over a goal a game, um, you know, 30 hit outs or whatever the case may be. Like his numbers and his impact, no ruck he's having at the moment. His ability to win the contest, win the contested ball when it goes to the ground, to go forward, to, you know, take the marks defensively, you know, to stop the runs down the line. Like, his ability to just impact the game for the Saints at the moment is doing more than what any nearly any other player in the competition, let alone any other Ruckman in the competition, is doing. Um, and I, I would assume that he would be in the, the at least the 44 squad. Um, but when the, the All-Australian uh, names come out, I would... I'd be disappointed if his name's not called out for the starting ruck position because he's been absolutely phenom- phenomenal. Down back, um, if Kerno does play, it's expected he'll be named um, and be right to go this week. Um, but I'd love to see Cal Wilkie go on to Kerno just to, to really utilise Wilkie's intercept and IQ ability. Uh, Kerno does like to push up the ground, especially when Kerno and Mackay play together. They do like to leave Mackay the one out and then Kerno up forward um, to really use his you know around the ground kicking. Um, so I think Wilkie can run with him and, and really, sh- you know, show him up um, this weekend. So Sunday afternoon, um, I hate Sunday games, but it's the last one for the year. Um, before I finish up, I do want to say thanks to everyone that does watch this um, Oppo View segment. I know it's only, you know, a small number of people, um, but I, I do appreciate the support and um, the love that I get for it. It's, it's amazing what, you know, Saints footy can bring. So um, I want to shout out, shout out all you guys. Um, get down there Sunday, Marvel Stadium, send the boys off with a good win, and let's look forward to a, a really healthy and strong 2025. And as as always, go your mighty saviors.